from home now to our, our sphere of public sector leadership. In the, we've all talked about the digital era. We had e-government in those days where it was uh, a mantra more or less. And of course, you've led the Bureau of Public Service Reform. So you are not only teaching it, but you have actually lived it. And so in this era, with the, the advancement of digitization and governance, and like uh, I shared shortly before we came online, that I'm interested more in what can public sector leaders learn from the pandemic in terms of their leadership. I shared the example of you know, the Minister of Finance doing a town hall virtually and sharing the government's plan digitally that everybody could attend. That kind of event, ordinarily, you would need a pass to go to the Hilton to sit down with all of these guys wielding guns, AK-47s, looking fierce, and driving people away. But suddenly, we democratize governance in that era. What are the lessons that you think have been learned, and what could our public sector leadership, leaders in the public sphere, what can they bring into that into the post-pandemic era that will improve accountability, improve how leaders relate with, uh, with, 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 with constituents, or I don't want to use the word subject, we are not their subjects, but you know the citizens that they have to provide services for. What is there, what are the lessons there that public sector leaders can take home and then use in improving their leadership? Thanks, Akin. Well, let's let's relate uh, my answer to your first question to the public service and ask ourselves how possible could it have been in the public service. Um, you recall that uh, even after the lockdown ended, many governments, federal and state, announced that uh, officers from level twelve and below should uh, continue to work from home for some time. Um, you and I know that that basically meant don't do any work uh, for, for that period because the, the systems were not computerized. It was, uh, it was virtually impossible uh, to, to continue to work from home. So, so I, think, I think for me, it's a, it's a wake up call to the way we currently do things to, to, to you know, uh, uh, demonstrates in very stark terms that we can no longer continue to rely on an analog paper-based system. Um, God forbid if something were to go wrong, you know, if there were to be a physical attack on any government buildings, uh, it, it suggests that the business of government will more likely grind to a halt. You know, if people cannot access government services or government documents in a secure way that enables the, 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 the country to continue to function. So I, I think that was, a, that was a very stark lesson that, that most uh, public sector leaders should bear in mind. The second is, is what I said about, about ensuring that the public sector workers are able to continue working in, in, in a way that uh, doesn't cause them additional hardship. Um, the, the public sector compensation and benefits regime is very, very rigid. Uh, I don't believe that there's been a review of, uh, of public sector remuneration in the last 14 years. I think the last one was probably the Edozian report in, in 2006, 2007. And so in a, in a scenario where the, the Naira has crashed against, the, against most foreign currencies, uh, cost of inflation has risen. We haven't reviewed public sector pay, at least for the, uh, for the majority for a very, very long time. And so, and so uh, I think it should also be something that that, that public sector leaders bear in mind. Um, when I was in BPSR, we, we did a survey which was done for us by the National Bureau of Statistics 
asking Nigerians generally whether they were consulted before the budget is, is, uh, is prepared, the, the federal budget is prepared. And this was a very wide ranging survey, we went to all the 36 states of the country and the FCT, we went to every single electoral ward in Nigeria. We interviewed in excess of 2000 public sector organizations and I think another 2000 private sector companies and 70% uh, of those that were interviewed said they had never even heard of any consultation with regards to the budget, talk less of, not to talk of having participated in, in, in one. Um, and that is despite the fact that uh, at the time that we did that survey, the, the budget office has started consultations with representatives of key bodies like, you know, the organized private sector, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. They had actually started those, those, those uh, consultations, but majority of Nigerians had absolutely no awareness that this was going on. So, so the, the, the pandemic provided an opportunity, like you said, for many ministers, many public sector organizations to now engage with the public in a way that they hadn't done before. And uh, I, I, I sort of uh, uh, anticipated this because I, I, I was, I am still the, the first public servant to have defended his budget online. And that was in 2016. And I, 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 defended, the, I defended BPSR's draft budgets online uh, and on social media and on radio. And uh, as, as, as you and I know, if you can defend your, your budget on social media in this country as a government official, defending it before the National Assembly is a, is a piece of cake. So, so, so I defended it on, on social media, I defended it on, on radio and uh, enabled Nigerians to ask questions of what was contained in that budget. And, and like I said, that was five years ago. Um, so, so this pre presents an opportunity for uh, today's public servants to do more consultation with regards to budget, to do more consultation with regards to uh, policy development. I also did that when I was in when I was in BPSR. Uh, I, I ensured that uh, BPSR's work plan was uh, was created as a result of a public consultation about what people wanted BPSR to focus on. And that was why um, in our 2017 work plan, we focused on um, uh, making it easier to get driver's licenses, making it easier to get passports, uh, moving away from national identity cards to focusing on national identity numbers, and making it possible to get uh, tax clearance certificates online these were based on and also some work we did on uh, on um, the bottlenecks to service delivery particularly seeing doctors in a government hospital and getting bail at police stations so so these were these were informed by consultations that asked the question you know what are the biggest pain points when you come into contact with government and these were the things that people said and this is what informed the work plan of BPSR that year. So, so this presents an opportunity for governments uh, and public servants to consult the people more, uh, use, the, use the experience and opinions of people to calibrate the, 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 the work that they are uh, delivering to the public. So I, I see a lot of opportunities. Of course, uh, it requires a greater level of accountability and transparency because you need to be able to put in the public domain. This is why I put 2000 Naira to buy magazines and newspapers. And this is why it is needed. And this is why I, I put uh, you know, 20,000 Naira to buy diesel. So you need to have a certain level of accountability and transparency to be able to work in this way. And, and this, and, and, and you know, the, the, the payback and reward that I got is members of the public, even on social media, saying, okay, uh, Dr. Joe Abba is different from the rest. Uh, 
Uh, he's accountable to us, he's transparent to us, and he's different from the rest. And, you know, he's the kind of public servant we should really be looking for. Thank you very much.